From here in Fayetteville, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Texas won the toss. They elect to defer. So we will see what the Razorbacks' offense looks like right away. 79th all-time meeting between these former Southwest Conference rivals as Dicker kicks away, and we will get a chance to see K.J. Jefferson, his first year as a starting quarterback. Katie George proudly considers himself a country boy from a small town in Mississippi. Yeah, he does, does. Sam Pittman said most teams make their biggest adjustments from week one to week two because coaches realize, hey, maybe we didn't have the best combinations out on the field. Well, that's not the case for Arkansas. Pittman said he had the right guys in the right spots a week ago, and that included his starting quarterback. He is all in on K.J. Jefferson. Now, they know he has some nerves right now. Pittman says the quickest way for him to settle in and gain confidence, let him do what he does best, run the football. Last week he did that, Greg, 89 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns in the win against Rice. That was the man in motion, Burks, who was hit with the snap, and the flag came in. Start of the snap, false start. Offense on the left guard. Five-yard penalty. It's first down. Brandon Cruz is our referee tonight. Let's take a look tonight. Chick-fil-A impact players. This is Traylon Burks and Traylon Smith there for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Burks, not a great day last week. One of the best wide receivers in the SEC. And then defensively for the Texas Longhorns, Coburn, the big body in the middle, and then Overshone, who's going to have to do a great job running sideline to sideline with some of the speed that Arkansas will have on the field. And Coburn, big number 99 for the Horns. 346 pounds clogging things up. Smith trying to get free, and you see exactly what we talked about. You clock things up and it lets the linebackers run free, and that was overshown with the tackle. And that was a great job right here. I mean, watch this right here. Look at him throw the left guard, Latham. Just tosses him in the back, allows those linebackers to close. Second and 27, that was a loss of two. Here's Burks trying to get to the outside, and very good pursuit to take him out of bounds. Thompson with the tackle. Traylon Burks, first team preseason all SEC, but he's dealing with injuries, was in a walking boot for 12 of the last 14 practices before week one. It was clear he was not himself. So clearly, Kendall Browse, the offensive coordinator for Arkansas, trying to get him involved in the game plan early. Third and 14. AJ Jefferson. Quarterback for Arkansas. Has time. It's going to check underneath the Smith, and Smith is going to be about three yards short of that line to gain. The cornerback, Deshaun Jamison, cut him down. A great job there by Texas's defense, forcing the three and out. Had a mistake by Arkansas on the illegal snap on first down, getting behind the sticks and off schedule, but a good job of pursuit there by the Longhorns. Their coach, Pete Kwiatkowski, the outstanding defensive coordinator, these guys will try to keep it in front of them. Don't want to give up many big plays to this Arkansas offense. Hunter Reed Bauer better be directional because Deshaun Jamison is a great return. And he is outside the numbers and out of bounds. All right, we got the red shirt freshman making his second start of his Texas career. Katie Hudson Carr. Well, last week, Card impressed his teammates and coaches, guys, not only with his execution, but in the way he handled himself on the field. B.J. Robinson said he looked like a vet out there. He was comfortable and in control at all times. Now, it's one thing to do it in front of your home crowd. It's another to do it on the road in what will be the most hostile environment Card has experienced at the college level. He says he's excited and ready for his first Saturday night in the SEC. And hear that roar of what a Saturday night under the lights in the SEC sounds like. Robinson off right tackle and he is met and driven back. That is Hayden Henry the linebacker who gets the start tonight because Bumper Pool, yes Bumper Pool, the starting linebacker had a targeting penalty and that has him out of the first half this week. And he's going to have a tall order now. Those linebackers are asked to do a lot within this Arkansas defense. And this running back they're facing has to be very good tacklers in the open field. Tackled for a loss. Fouché coming up from that safety spot. Voted one of the team captains this year. 
This is the one thing that the Hogs can do. They can play some defense. Barry Odom's a defensive coordinator, former Mizzou head coach. Third and 11. Three-man rush dropping eight. Card looking for something. Now he's going to tuck, and he's going to be taken down, and Texas is going to be punting. A three and out for Hudson Card and the Longhorns. What a great job there by Arkansas's defense. Forcing the negative play on second down of B. Sean Robinson. Then dropping back, keeping everything in front. And as soon as Card exited the pocket, they stayed true to their coverage, rallied up to make the tackle as he crossed the line of scrimmage. Just outstanding fundamental defense by both the Longhorns and the Razorbacks in each of their first two possessions. Cameron Dicker on to punt. He has all three specialist jobs for the Longhorns. Special teams coordinator Jeff Banks tries to make a good point of resting that leg during the week. He booms this one. Inside the tent. What a punt! It's mucked! It is mucked! And Texas has it! First and goal, Longhorns! Keaton Crawford on special teams downfield to recover it. Tremendous punt by Dicker. Great special teams coverage. And they come up with the turnover. And Brooks it just drifts a little bit, a little breezy. Oh, and wow, was the right toe out of bounds as he touched the football? Let's take a look. Right foot out of bounds. Let's bring in our three-time Super Bowl referee, John Perry. John, what do you see? Greg, you're on fire tonight right <laughs> off the bat. We get a, muff, a muffed kick. And like you, I think that right toe is touching a loose ball, which will put it out of bounds right there. Yeah, and that's a tough break for Texas. It was such a great play there. Just ran out of room, and Brooks losing track of the football as it drifted a little bit to his left. But there it is. Toes on the line, touches the football there. Looks pretty clear to me, guys, that this ball is going to be given to the Razorbacks at the four-yard line. What a crazy turn of events there. Here. After reviewing the play, when the player, the Texas player who stepped out of bounds first before he touched A game of inches. How about a game of just a big toe? It goes from first and goal Texas to Arkansas football. What a roller coaster there. <laughs> All right, here, backed up operation. Now you have a young quarterback, hasn't started a whole lot. So what you're thinking and you're reminding you want to go with a hard count. Hard count no matter what, because even if you jump off sides, you lose two. But if they jump off sides, you gain five because of the because of the offside. So I think hard count coming out here. Remind all your guys sit in there. I'm going to try to draw them off sides and maybe get a free play out of it. So Jefferson two yards into his own end zone. Takes the pitch and then he is wrapped up for a loss of one. That was Luke Brockermeyer, the former walk-on, who's now a tackling machine, had 10 tackles last week in the middle of that Texas defense. And they're going to funnel everything to the middle of that defense where the sure-handed Brockermeyer will likely make the play. Second and 11. Smith! Good gas play by Traylon Smith. We talked to some of these defensive players this week here at Arkansas. They say Traylon is like trying to tackle water. First first down of the game for either team. 16 yards there. And now quickly he goes to his tight end who is upended. That was Blake Kern as the target but Anthony Cook read it perfectly. Great tackle there on the perimeter. An excellent run to get you out of the shadow of your own goalpost there. Sometimes these big body tight ends, I mean, you just got to attack the thigh boards, man. Mm -hmm. That's a great tackle there. The big fella didn't know what was coming. Turn goes 265.
KJ on second down quarterback run but he's trying to find something he finds nothing but a whole lot of horns wrapping him up right at the line of scrimmage Pete Kwiatkowski is the new defensive coordinator here he's doing a fine job early on with Texas right there KJ Jefferson on the quarterback draw got to be more decisive it looked like he had a little bit of room there to create some positive yards not every play is going to be a touchdown but hey go get what you can on second and ten maybe make third down a little more manageable instead he danced and results in a much tougher third down speedy freshman AJ Green is in the backfield with Jefferson kid ran a 10 3 in high school and they get it to him out of the backfield see if he can square those shoulders and hit the motor and he is forced out it looks like just maybe a yard short of that line to gain that was Josh Thompson who got to green really close there and a good effort there by green man early in this game the offense begging to stay on the field but yes Sam Pittman wisely going to go with the punt from Texas. their own 28 they thought about it if I'm Texas I'm going safe though I can tell you that much because <laughs> you know Sam Pittman will roll the dice that's for sure I'm going safe punt I'm not going to try to let a fake potentially fool me Ray Bauer on to punt again to Deshaun Jamison. Jamison, two kickoff return touchdowns, one punt return touchdown in his great career. Sky ball, fair catch at the 25. Well, defenses have looked good early on here. Under the lights for the SEC in primetime, Texas and Arkansas. That's John Robinson good run and spitting wide leg drive for nine yards Hudson card the quarterback he is from Lake Travis High School the famous Lake Travis High School when it comes to quarterback oh it's so good Todd Reesing of course what a career he had at Kansas one of the brightest days of Kansas football history Gary Gilbert had a pretty good career a whole bunch of guys there attacking the ball Robinson is pushed back Grant Morgan was the first to get there Eric Gilbert, Baker Mayfield. Oh, yeah, that was the big one. He was coming next. Unfortunately, Texas caught us off guard with a little, little speedy. We'll take a look at those Lake Travis quarterbacks a little later. They've been a whole bunch of them. But, man, a critical third down here. And it's going to get loud in Razorback Stadium for the young freshman Hudson Card. See if he looks in the direction of Jordan Whittington, though. He was his go-to guy last week in third down and medium distance. He had seven catches for 113 yards last week. Third and four. Pressure up the middle, and Carr goes down, and it's Grant Morgan again. The ultimate overachiever. Former walk-on who became a second-team All-America and is a team captain. Yeah, watch right here. He's going to fake out and then come back in, and that's exactly how he beats him. Beats him inside. Look at him just swim right around. Gets the guard confused. The guard stays left. Bijan stays left. And there's no one home in the A gap for Grant Morgan. So athletic there at the second level, man. He is so good, so instinctive, such a great player for the Hogs. Third tackle for loss for Arkansas. By the way, new return man after the muff punt. This is Bryce Stevens, the freshman. And he makes the first man miss. And the Hogs will be back on offense when we come back. To Razorback Stadium. What a fun night here with Texas and Arkansas back together again. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. And in part by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. It has been buzzing all weekend long. See Big Tusk come in, that proud Russian boar, the live mascot. And you know when it's, but listen, this is the kind of stuff you see here. This is a Baptist oh, church. We found it. this sign here in Fayetteville. Oh, Beat it. Texas everywhere you go. There's Tusk. We spent time with Tusk we this did. morning. Yes. Yeah. He was not real happy to see us. Well, I was feeding him some apples. And then it came the point where we were supposed to be live on TV with Tusk. Correct. And he just turned around, put his big butt yes, right now. He said, I'm not eating yes. any more apples from you. Correct. He big leagued us on television. He must not watch Holy Moly. No, not at all. 
Smith to the outside. That's where he's at his best if he can find space and wrapped up at the 40 yard line. Two drives for both teams. Texas two, three and outs, five yards. Arkansas one first down, 35 yards. Look at this is the problem, Greg. I mean, just just no, just absolutely will not acknowledge. I mean, the hog, you would think he'd eat apples, grapes, you name it. I just never stopped eating, right? No, not the case. Not our apples. He didn't like them apples. Second and six. Smith again met at the line of scrimmage and that was Brockermeyer with another tackle it's Texas defensive front doing their job early on against Arkansas yeah, very impressive Brockermeyer man he of course has stepped up and within Pete Kwiatkowski's system that middle linebacker has to be so sure tack so sure of a tackler because he's gonna get so many opportunities man he's lived up to it through the first five quarters of the season third and six another run for Jefferson and this time the big quarterback catches a seam. He's 6'3", 245, and when that freight train gets rolling, watch out. Great job, too, by the left side of that offensive line, starting to collapse that Longhorn front. And tempo now from the Hawks. Jefferson, with time, gets it to the outside. Should have been caught by Traylon Smith. This is a little bit of a problem, man, because this Arkansas team last week, they have maybe as sure-handed a wide receiver as there is in college football in Burks. He had two drops. There you see Smith with a drop. There have been three or four drops already here in the first game and ten minutes of the second game. So they got to clean it up with these wide receivers, leaving too many plays on the field. First time they've been in Texas territory. Jefferson goes to the outside, able to get it complete to Warren Thompson. Kendall Bryles is the new offensive coordinator. Came here after being at Florida State. Of course, was under his dad, Art, at Baylor for years. Second year for this staff was with Lane Kiffin at FIU. He got into the guys last week at halftime. Didn't like that first half performance against Rice. The message was simple, toughness. That's what Arkansas football is when they're at their best. A tough blue collar. Play with a chip on their shoulder. They got two downs to get it here potentially, especially going into the win. And six. Rocket Sanders. He gets a little extra drive as he pushes the pile to the 37-yard line. It'll be fourth and short there. I think you go for it. I think you run your quarterback, man. He's the biggest, strongest runner you have. Get your quarterback on a quarterback power and see if he can push the pile. Jefferson on fourth and two. He's got Rocket Sanders in the backfield with him. He pulls it to the outside, beats a man, has it, and a whole lot more. First down. Razorbacks. It was Brendan Schooler who had a shot at KJ Jefferson, but Jefferson glided ahead for 14 yards. Great read there by Jefferson as the end man on the line of scrimmage crashed. He had nothing but green grass. Excellent job on the zone read. First down, catch and more Burks. And that's what they will need tonight is Traylon Burks at his best. If I'm Arkansas, I'm going to ramp the tempo up right here. You got Texas defense on their heels, a couple guys along the defensive line, hands on your hips. I'm going to try to ramp up the tempo here. He's got Burks in one-on-one, -on -one potentially here down in the slot. First and goal. Quarterback run again, but this time they stayed true to it. That was Josh Thompson who read K.J. Jefferson right from the snap. Great job there by the Texas defense. Winning on the right side of that offensive line and making the play in the backfield. Great job stopping the bleeding when they were clearly getting pushed back at the line of scrimmage. Tenth play of the drive coming. Converted a fourth down to arrive at this. Second and goal. Looks on, seeing if his defense can come on with a stop. Rocket Sanders trying to get to the outside, but he met up with Overshone. 
Marion Overshone had 13 tackles last week against Louisiana. And that was a great job there. I mean, he's so quick. I mean, Overshone is so quick, man. And as soon as that ball breaks to the outside, it's advantage Overshone. He's just going to close faster than the running back, man. He can flat out get it. So great job there by the linebacker. Safety most of his career. Playing backer now. He can cover some ground. Third and goal. Arkansas has got numbers down here, way down to the left. There's only two Texas defenders. And taken down is Burks. They had the bunch to the numbers, and then he went to Burks in the slot. And they will bring on the field goal team. Good stop there by Texas, forcing the field goal after what was a promising drive there for the Hogs. Cam Little's a true freshman from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Made his first attempt last week, a 34-yarder. This from 24 yards. And Arkansas is on the board. They moved the ball 57 yards, converted a fourth down, and they have a 3-0 lead over Texas. All state will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, All State. We got some money to that fund right away here. Thanks to Cam Little, three nothing, Arkansas. Calvaruso will be kicking off. Jamison and Johnson back for the Horns. Steve Sarkeesian said, "Hey, we know what's up playing in the SEC now on the road." after the big announcement this summer. So we're everybody's biggest game. The bullseye got a little bit bigger. Let's, Let's go, go back. back to that third down, Greg. Yeah, a big opportunity missed here. You just got numbers. I mean, you got one running back out here in the flat with two blockers out in front. I mean, it's a game of numbers, and K.J. Jefferson instead decides to work the slot who's one-on-one -on -one with guys coming out underneath him. If he would have just thrown it out to Smith, in the flat, who knows? You got blockers out in front, and a guy with ball in his hands can create with some space. It's just all about finding those advantages, and that's something he'll learn as he continues to grow within this offense. Texas has five total yards to this point. Hudson Card, redshirt freshman, out of the pocket, being chased, extending the play, and then shot down right near the sideline by Greg Brooks. Let's check in with the studio and Matt. All right, Joe Tess, checking in on Iowa, Iowa State. It has not been a good day for Brees Hall, the Cyclones offense. Here, a fumble at the five. We get a scoop and score for Jack Campbell. All Hawkeyes for the Cyclones. Second and nine. Card. Off platform throw, and he gets it complete. And he does so to Xavier Worthy, Texas's first pass, and it goes to the freshman. Great. He's Fresno, California, and he's dynamic. It's a great throw by Carr, too. And an awesome job executing the scramble drill there by his wide receiver, Worthy. As soon as he drifted to his right, Wide receiver's got to reverse course and stay in front of the quarterback. It's exactly what he did there. He uncovered, and Card found him for a really nice completion. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter, and that's the first first down for the Horns. Whittington in motion as Robinson gets the call, finds a crease, and somehow gets to the outside. And just like that, Bijan Robinson hits the accelerator, got the seal block from Whittington. And look at the right side of that offensive line, just collapse it. And an excellent job by Bijan Robinson, being patient, pressing the hole, and then getting back at, to the outside. And now Card, look at the time he has. Looking for anything and anybody, and then just hits the feet for a gain of about five. And this is what Steve Sarkeesian wanted from his quarterback, man. Look, sometimes the defense wins. That was great coverage by the Razorbacks in the secondary. 
And this is what he wanted to see as they were going through the quarterback competition between Hudson Card and Casey Thompson. What separated Card in some ways was his athleticism and his willingness to allow the defense to win. Just make something out of nothing, set up second and manageable. We hit zeros at the end of the first quarter. And finally, Texas has found a little something. Trying to get their gear on offense, thanks to Robinson and Carr. And they'll be on the march when we come back to start the second quarter. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Joe Tessator alongside Greg McElroy and Katie George here in Fayetteville. Three nothing Arkansas to start the second quarter. Texas on the go here with 51 yards on this drive. They have 56 total yards, 51 of them on this drive. Second and five. Empty set for Carr. Looks right and then is gobbled up and thrown down. John Ridgeway, who wasn't able to play last week after an appendectomy, is back at 320 pounds. He just got on top of Hudson Carr. Man, that's so disappointing if you're the Texas Longhorns. This is a three-man rush against five offensive linemen. Three defenders, five blockers. It still results in a sack. That just can't happen for the Longhorns offense. Got to give credit, though, to Ridgeway. He did a great job of shedding the center. Jake Majors, the center. This is just the second start of his college career. Redshirt freshman from Prosper. Here comes Robinson back into the backfield on third and ten. Place is loud, isn't it? And the whistles rain in, and then a play went through. And I don't know that the defensive line, Trey Williams, realized things had been stopped there. Dangerous to be taken down the quarterback like that when he's not expecting it. Play of game, offense, five yard penalty, third down. You see right there, and Williams doesn't hear the whistles. Ref comes in, tries to save it, and he's got to be more aware. If that happens again, it's late. It's going to result in a penalty. It's lucky it didn't there. Third and 15. Williams coming off the edge again. Card getting free. Look at this toss to the end zone. But Whittington couldn't come up with it as he tried his best. But Thompson, I'll tell you, or a card, I'll tell you, on the run, he can gun it. Oh man, so close. What a great throw. But here's the thing: when you're running to your right and you're a right-handed quarterback, you think about how that ball mm -hmm. spins coming off your right hand. It spins clockwise. So what does that force the ball to do? It's going to tail just a little bit to the right, and as a result, it drifts just a little off the mark. But man, close play there for the Longhorns. 52-yard attempt for Cameron Dicker, one of the best kickers in the country. He's got a career long of 57. And Arkansas is going to use a timeout. And we're going to take a break. And Texas is going to try to tie this game up when we come back to Fayetteville. For certain. All right, for our friends in Texas, we'll check in on Oklahoma. Spencer Rattler to Eric Gray out of the backfield. This is going to be quick work for the Sooners tonight already. 17 nothing. Get to the first. Spencer Rattler with a couple of touchdowns for Oklahoma. Cameron Dicker with a 52-yard attempt for Texas. And it's wide right. He hit the upright going this direction from this distance in pregame. Not the rotation he was looking for. Came underneath it just a little bit. Talented big leg kicker who does all three kicking jobs now. First Longhorns player since Justin Tucker. Great Justin Tucker to do that. Sam Pittman, head coach of Arkansas. 
one of the most likable head coaches in all of college football. He is in his second year, 59-year-old, longtime offensive line coach all over college football. He's with Georgia for many of their great teams in recent years. Smith on first down. He gets free. Trayvon Smith crosses midfield for the Hogs. 32-yard run for Smith. How about the left side of this offensive line? Look at this double team. As he easily gets to the second level, Cunningham locking up with that linebacker to break Smith free. Excellent job. Jefferson, quick to the outside. Thompson, he's a big-bodied receiver. Give a little something extra to Dunn at the end of that play. Right here, if I'm... Kendall Bryles, I'm thinking about taking a shot. I got a lot of momentum offensively. I want to go heavy play action, try to throw it over Texas's head. Then if you miss, it's still got third and short. Second and four. We're going to have the first down. Big tight end, Blake Kern. Former walk-on has had a productive career. Holding some confidence with K.J. Jefferson, the redshirt sophomore quarterback. Comes to the other side and gets it complete to Traylon Burks. 22 straight games with a catch for Traylon Burks. It's a great job there by K.J. Jefferson, keeping his eyes downfield, throwing an accurate strike to Burks. 21-yard reception, first down at the 11-yard line. Jefferson. Burks again, and he cannot shake free. As Jaron Thompson stayed with Burks. Burks a big receiver, 6'3", 225. He's a special talent, enormous catch radius. Really disappointed in himself last week. Did not play well. Of course, you referenced it, Joe. Had a tough time in fall camp staying healthy. Didn't get the reps he needed, but, man, he's looking more like himself here in week number two. Five catches and five targets tonight. Smartly picking it up is Johnson. And Johnson makes the most of it. Johnson fights his way to the five-yard line. That snap was worm burning on the ground. And Johnson said, I will gladly take it. Quick to the line. As Burks is in the backfield, Traylon Burks, the star wide receiver, is lined up behind K.J. Jefferson. Third and four. And they go underneath to Johnson. Johnson fighting for the goal line and finding it. Dominic Johnson, touchdown. Across the plane, looks like he does. What a drive there by the Arkansas Razorbacks. Johnson was buried on the depth chart at one point. In fact, he even moved to tight end at one point. But then, in some practices, they had him at running back because some guys were out. He started playing really well, and they just kept him there. And he's turning into their short yardage specialist. Had a short yardage touchdown last week in the final minute to widen the margin of victory against Rice. And here he caps a 66-yard drive. And he does so with great desire and hunger. What do we say about Arkansas at their best when they're tough, when they're blue-collar? When they out tough teams and play with a chip on your shoulder, well, that shoulder just crossed the goal line. 
And the Razorbacks are up 10 zip on number 15, Texas. ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Subway, is brought to you by Barbecue Guys, for those who were born to grill. 1969 was the game of the century. Famous photo of President Nixon, who took a helicopter to the game, by the way, that day, and declared Texas the national champs. They won 15 to 14. You know, it's so interesting that year. ABC, the programmers of ABC, actually moved that game. It was supposed to be in October. They said, hold on a second. This needs to be the regular season finale of what was then the historic 100th season of college football. And what a, what a great move that was because it's an all time classic. Texas won it 15 to 14. On the return is Jamison. And Jamison trying to weave his way before he ran into his own man. Let's go to Matt Berry in the studio. All right, guys, keeping an eye on some of the teams trying to bounce back from week one losses. One of them, Sam Howell in North Carolina. Not going to be much drama for them tonight. Sam Howell keeps this one 22 yards to go up quickly, 7-0. Let's check in one more time. Sam Howell to Antoine Green, 22 yards of perfection. This one all Tar Heels early. Look at that grab, 14-0, 6.30 left in the first. Thank you, Matt. Back to business for Card and Robinson. Texas only has 51 total yards. Arkansas 158. Bijan spinning after the initial contact as he gets it out to the 22 yard line. Joe Fouché with the tackle. I think that's how Texas is going to get back into this game a little bit. It's gotten a little sideways. The crowd very much into it. But you're only one drive away from making this obviously a field goal game. But the way they get down and make it a field goal game is by feeding number five. He's got to get a heavy dose on this drive to help take the crowd out of it and to steal some of that momentum from the Hawks. Had 24 touches last week for 176 yards from scrimmage. And he'll get it again, and he's tackled in the backfield. Henry was the first to get in there, and then it was cleaned up by Nichols. But Hayden Henry was shooting that gap, and then Nichols got the tackle. Yeah, and a great job there by Henry. Nobody was there for him. He just saw the red seat apart. Man, he fired his gun. Stopped the momentum from Robinson. Excellent job by the linebacker. Critical third down here for the young Hudson card. Five TFLs now for the Razorbacks. Third and six. I think the slot receiver took a little leap forward before the snap. Before the snap, ball start. Offense number four. Five yard penalty. It's third down. It is standing room only at Razorback Stadium. And there will be a lot of throat lozenges sold in Fayetteville tomorrow morning. Listen to this on 3rd and 11. Student section to Hudson Cards right. The loudest part of the stadium is about 20 yards away from the freshman. 0-3 on 3rd down. Hard. Trying to extend and right at the line of scrimmage, he sidearms it looking for Whittington and it's incomplete. It's dangerous there from Hudson Card as he was escaping to his left. It was well covered by the Hogs yet again. They have to find some rhythm to this passing game because really the only positives from the passing game here in the first quarter and a half have been when Hudson Card has improvised and escaped the pocket. They got to find some stuff that gets the ball out of his hand and gets some of these receivers in open space with room to run. Third three and out for Texas. Dicker bobbles it and then it's partially blocked. Arkansas recovers. Oh, it is all about the Hogs right now. Check came in on Dicker and gets the block punt. Crawford was there to recover it. 
those hands critically important and remember Cameron Dicker a long time kicker and kickoff specialist was asked this summer to manage all three to also be the starting puncher so a four yard punt and now the 14 yard line served on a silver platter for Jefferson and the offense and Smith gets loose a stiff arm turns inside the 10 before he is ridden out. How about this young fella, Traylon Smith, at 185 pounds, but I'll tell you what, he doesn't play like it. How strong on the stiff arm with the left hand. Just an excellent run there by the outstanding sophomore back. Jefferson to his tight end Kern and he goes nowhere thanks to Josh Thompson the corner from Texas and Kendall Bryles to dial up a third and three here trying to extend this lead you got to think too man at this part of the field do you have two downs to get it? I think you do. I mean, the offensive line's playing well. Your quarterback's playing well. You're running the ball pretty efficiently. I think you got two downs to get it. You just force it right up there inside between the tackles. Jefferson has completed his last eight passes in a row. Third and three. Pressure off the edge. To the end zone! And it'll be fourth down. Traylon Burks was floating along the back line of the end zone. That was a great play defensively there in the second level. It got tipped. It did. I think it was B.J. Foster that got a hand on it. Man, what a great play there by the safety. Cam Little comes on, made a 24-yarder earlier, 23-yard attempt here. And the block punt. That went ahead for only four yards. Arkansas instantly cashes in. Could have been much more with more damage. But as it is now, 13 zip. Arkansas on top of number 15. Hey, Sunday Night Baseball is Yankees and Mets 8 Eastern on ESPN and that means Scott Matthews our producer and Jeff Evers our director are going to be at each other's throats I understand Scotty Matthews has his Mets hat on right now in the truck <laughs> as he's producing the game you don't see a lot of that down here in Fayetteville 13 nothing Arkansas boy Hudson card this is what playing on the road in the SEC is all about isn't it Katie yeah, it is, guys. Through a quarter and a half, Hudson Card has kept to himself on these sidelines. He's very quiet. He's done a good amount of pacing back and forth. But Stark told us that in no way means he is not dialed in. He is the ultimate competitor. Well, they're going to need to see some of that competitiveness here if they want to get back before half. So second start of his career, Greg, and he's one of three throwing for 25 yards and trails by 13. And they got to get him some, some things to build that confidence right now. I mean, he's just looking and I think they're seeing some goes and Barry Odom, the defensive coordinator, dropping a lot of guys out in coverage. So Steve Sarkeesian's got to settle his quarterback down. Run him if you have to. He's a good athlete. Do some zone reads. Get him out on the move, but find something to give him a little bit of confidence and get him feeling good about the plan. Kid was a wide receiver in high school up until a Highly recruited quarterback moved on. He can motor if he needs to. Robinson again met with contact and then went ahead for about three yards beyond the line of scrimmage. But he has been hit at or behind the line of scrimmage three times tonight. And that can't happen against the look that Arkansas is playing. I want you to look. When we get over the football, I want you to see how many defenders Arkansas has in the box. The last few snaps, they've only had five in the box, which means you got to be able to run the ball with some efficiency. This time, a few more guys creeping in close, but man, they got to find some room in the run game. Card quickly to the outside, and that is Davis. Juan Davis 
is a freshman tight end. And they give him a little bit of work. It'll be third and seven. Just a short gain there. They've struggled on third down. 0 and 4. Watch the pressure from Arkansas. It's a pressure look right now with some of those safeties creeping up. Keep an eye on Catalan. He might trigger a blitz. Catalan's one of the best defensive backs in all of college football. Had two interceptions last week. O'Clock running down. Third and eight. Carr has time. That's a wobbler. It was deflected at the line of scrimmage. And it'll be the fourth three and out for Texas out of five drives here tonight. So right there, that was a great job by Barry Odom adjusting right there. He checked, actually, and you see they were showing pressure, and Catalan was rubbing the top of his helmet, and all of a sudden they dropped into a drop seven coverage. So they made the check, Texas did. Barry Odom then makes the check. And all of a sudden, the defense is right. That was an excellent job of cat and mouse there by the OC and DC. Stevens booms this fair catch outside the numbers by Bryce Stevens off the Dicker punt. 47-yard punt by Dicker. 6.02 until the half. 13 zip, Arkansas. Folks, we may have history tomorrow. Djokovic. Medvedev is the U.S. Open men's finals. And Novak is trying to win the Grand Slam, the first calendar year Grand Slam since Rod Laver in 1969 on the men's side of the U.S. Open. We were talking about the Joker earlier today. We are saying, like, he's just so ridiculously consistent. He's unbelievable. He's like watching a robot. He is. He's unbelievable, man. A.J. Jefferson in the Hollands with a 13-zip lead. And gets it to the outside to Warren, and Warren reaches out to the 30-yard line. So you think about how Arkansas started the game. Offensive dismal, right? First two drives, a couple of punts. Last three drives, touchdown, two field goals, 13 points. Yeah, that quarterback's gotten comfortable. I mean, he's throwing it well. He's running it well. This will be a first down run from Traylon Smith, who's 5'9", 190, but will run hard between the tackles. It reminds me of Dexter McCluster a little bit. Remember Dexter McCluster from Ole Miss, man? Absolutely. I remember our game plan against him was like, hey, dude, whatever you do, don't let 22 beat you. <laughs> That's what kind of player Dexter was. And I'm telling you, Traylon Smith is a lot like that. First down, Jefferson. Look at Jefferson. K.J. Jefferson. And he's breaking free inside the 35. Well, you just made the comp of saying Dexter McCluster. How about K.J. Jefferson with a little bit of prime Cam Newton back in the day? Man, he looks a lot like Cam Newton. I'll tell you what, he's that guy unblocked right off the edge. I mean, it's no problem whatsoever. Just calmly shakes him out of his shoes, gets backside. Beautifully done by K.J. Jefferson. A.J. Green going nowhere, overshone with the tackle. Katie. Well, he'll appreciate that Cam Newton comparison, guys. He watches the same Cam Newton hype video. It's eight minutes long before every single game, before he comes out onto this field. He tries to channel that swagger that we see Mr. Cam Newton play with as well. Oh, Cam has a quote-unquote aura about him. <laughs> he did does. you hear that quote? I did hear, you hear that, that quote? quote. But it's funny because he runs like Cam, where it doesn't look like he's running very hard, but nobody catches him. He's just big and efficient with those strides. 11 green. As he gets to that left side and fights for a little more, the freshman from Tulsa. He's compact, he's fast, he's got good ball skills. And Jerry Jones is here. Hey, his grandsons are in the game, right? First cousins are playing against each other. He's got John Stephen Jones, backup quarterback for Arkansas. Paxton Anderson is a wide receiver for Texas. So Jerry and Stephen and the family, they are here tonight. Of course, great legacy for the Jones family at Arkansas. Big third down here from the Texas defense. Jefferson on third and four. Wrapped up. Thank you, Jefferson. 
And that was a great job, man, by B.J. Foster. There in the third level, secondary player, man, giving up about 50 pounds to K.J. Jefferson. And he says, I ain't scared. Goes up there, throws his shoulder into the quarterback and drops him for a loss. Excellent job by the safety on consecutive big third downs. Tipped the ball in the end zone and made the play at the line of scrimmage, ending Arkansas drives. Cam Little is two for two tonight. But this is his longest attempt from 44. And with a little help, it goes right in. Cam Little, the true freshman from Tulsa, three for three. And Arkansas probably wishes some of those were sevens, but that scoreboard looks mighty fine all the same for Sam Pittman and the Hogs. As you see it drifting just a touch. No problem. You don't have to draw a picture on the scorecard, Joe. Just write it down as a three and that's right. Call it good. Everybody's been talking about this game in terms of former Southwest Conference rivals, soon to be SEC rivals. Of course, Oklahoma and Texas announced that they would join the SEC by July 1st, 2025. And then of course you get the Big 12 expansion news yesterday and Commissioner Sankey's actually at the game and he has stressed time and again and the quote he gave yesterday is hey we look forward to an orderly transition process we want to be respectful throughout the process so there's no talk of Texas or Oklahoma are they coming over early that's all stuff of media speculation officially it's you heard the announcement this summer you haven't heard anything else. Let's take a look at tonight's fighting spirit moment brought to you by Modelo. And how about the spirit of this Arkansas defense, man? They have been flying to the football, dominating the line of scrimmage, oftentimes getting in a very light box. Not a lot of defenders in the box, but they are providing constant pressure. I mean, three-man rush against five blockers, still dropping the young freshman quarterback, Hudson Card, for the sack. They have been tenacious up front. And at the second level, those linebackers have been outstanding. And to think that they're doing it without one of their best linebackers, Bumper Poole, who will return in the second half because he sat out the first half because of targeting, that's scary for Texas. Got to get something going. Robinson trying to be that somebody to get something going. You see Poole there. Bumper Pool. Yeah, he'll be back in a couple minutes. Obviously on his toes, fired up to get in there, but man, have they played well in his absence. Hayden Henry's made a lot of plays. They're excited about his future. He is the younger brother of the Patriots tight end, Hunter Henry, who is a great one here at Arkansas. Second and four, Hudson Card avoids the pressure and then checks down underneath to Johnson. And Roshan Johnson will move the chains for Texas. Just under two and a half minutes. Can Texas get on the board here before halftime. Yeah, they need to, man. They are just getting pushed around. I mean, just to play a go, you look at their left tackle, Christian Jones, I mean, with a strong arm from Trey Williams, and he's on his backside, man. I mean, they have got to sure up the offensive line because this Razorback defense, they're breathing fire on the front. It's his first season as a left tackle. Robinson, not much there at all again. That front seven, you said breathing fire. John Ridgeway, he's like a dragon in the middle then. He's been torching things up front. He's a load. 6'6, 320. He's a big boy, man. He is strong as an ox there in the middle of that defense. Second and nine. Card. Downfield, wide open. And it is incomplete, and then coming in, trying to make a play on it. That time, Catalan was there, and Clark tried to come up with the interception, but it's incomplete. Whittington was wide open. And it was a good job by Card coming to the number two in his progression, and that's one Whittington's absolutely got a reel in for his quarterback. It was well thrown a little late and allowed Catalan to close. The one the receiver got to make a play on. Texas 0 for 5 on third downs. False start. Offense number 78. Third down. And 
are going to make it harder on themselves. Third and nine just became third and 14. Now, if you're Sark, man, you got to think about timeouts because you're going to be punting it more than likely. You just got to get that clock running so you can force Arkansas to burn a timeout. They can't execute a two minute operation. What a difference a week makes. You see that comparison of Card last week to this week? Third and 14, three man rush. That gives Card time, but he goes underneath and hustling to the ball. They meet up with Whittington. So again, Texas will be punting. A little surprised that Arkansas is not calling time out here. I mean, they got time to potentially execute a two minute operation. Now, the quarterback. Great athlete, not the best thrower in the world, but man, you could steal some points. You got all the momentum, and yet looks like Sam Pittman's going to play conservative here and let the clock wind. Good punt by Dicker. Let's go to the studio and Matt. All right, Joe Tess, coming up from the Mercedes EQ halftime report. Iowa continues to dominate. Cyhawk highlights at that. Plus, a big day for the Pac-12. Oregon goes into the shoe and beats Ohio State. Plus, no JT Daniels. No problem for Georgia. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway join me coming up on the Mercedes-Benz EQ halftime report. Look forward to hearing what the guys have to say. And what was your quick takeaway with what Oregon was able to do? So impressive. I mean, Joe Moorhead, the offensive coordinator for the Oregon Ducks, man, he was three or four steps ahead of that Ohio State defense the entire day. I mean, Ohio State continued to get outflanked, and the speed that Oregon was able to play with, and their quarterback, man, how about Anthony Brown? I yep. mean, just so composed on the road, time after time, throwing accurately to his wide receivers. That was a really impressive showing from the Ducks. Listen, I've known the kid since he was 18 years old. He was a teammate of my sons at Boston College. He has had a long road. He's had a lot of injuries. But he's healthy now, and he's matured, and he's a smart player who's got real physical gifts, and he showed it today in that upset. Traylon Smith, here's a guy with physical gifts as well. You know, those two timeouts are going to sit there, Greg McElroy, but a 16 nothing lead is on the board. You got to feel really good if you're Arkansas with how you've played. Would love to have cashed in some of those short fields into touchdowns, but man, to have this kind of lead in this kind of environment, you got to be feeling great. Texas got to look at it and say, hey, man, it's only a really a two-score game. A couple two-point conversions, you're back in it. You played about as bad as you could in the first half. How's this home field advantage? <laughs> this is a tough one. How's this? This place rocks. There's no doubt about it. A lot of people around here saying Sam Pittman has brought back Arkansas kind of football. Katie. Thanks, Tess. Coach Pittman, you said you liked the way your defense matched up against Texas's offense. You held them to 78 total yards. What has impressed you about the way they played so far? Uh, I think we, we had a pretty good idea of what they were going to do, and I, we had one of the best D coordinators in the country. And uh, I was really proud of the way they played, and, and they, I mean, they got after them pretty good. What did you think of KJ and the offense's ability to settle in after those first few series? Yeah, uh, you know, we scored points. I wish they were seven, but we scored points there, and I thought KJ running the ball helped us a little bit. Got a long half last week. We we're down three going into one by 21, so got a long half. But I'm I'm, I'm happy with where we played the first half. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Yeah, KJ Jefferson, his quarterback, has run the ball well. He's got 59 yards, and what a great effort by his defensive coordinator. Just like he said, Barry Odom's defense pitching a shutout here at the half. Number 15 is trailing on the road, 16 to zip. Let's go to the halftime report with Matt and the guys. For certain. College football primetime presented by Subway. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Katie George here in Fayetteville where we've got a game that's got the past, the present, the future all converging on a Saturday night. And Arkansas leads number 15, 16 zip. First half stats are brought to you by PlayStation. A Johnson touchdown and three Cam little field goals is how we've arrived here. Look at the total yards, 228 to 78. Just so dominant by this Arkansas defense. I mean, so good for the entire 30 minutes of that first half.
Texas is going to have a chance to answer right away because they will get the ball to start this second half. Greg, Texas has been in Arkansas territory only one time tonight. One time they've crossed the 50 yard yeah. line. They only have three first downs. And it's because right now that defensive line for Arkansas is giving them the business. And it's against favorable looks. If you look at it, how many defenders are in the box? There's five guys in the box. That's a favorable run look. And yet, look, one of the best running backs in college football can't do anything if he's getting stopped before the line of scrimmage. Same thing here, five guys in the box. Doesn't matter. You allow Henry to run through. And then how about the pass rush? My goodness, three guys rushing the passer. They get home against Hudson Card. They have got to be able to hold up against these Razorback defensive linemen. Dijon Robinson is going to try to get this second half started. Katie. Well, guys, one thing we know about Sark, he doesn't panic or change his demeanor, whether his team is up or down. He told his offense to settle in. He felt like they were very anxious in the first two quarters. He said Hudson was dropping his eyes while receivers were dropping passes. There were some missed blocks as well. So he challenged this group to play calm and clean football. Second and seven, they go with an inside screen. I mean, this Arkansas front is flying around. Winnington had no chance at all. Yeah, and that was a beautiful play there by Grant Morgan. One of the most productive tacklers in the SEC, just feeling that tunnel screen on the left, and then obviously rallying quickly and beating the lineman to the spot. Drop the wide receiver for a minimal gain. Six tackles for loss, third and eight. Yet to convert a third down tonight. Hudson Card goes underneath short of the line to make to Whittington, and they will be punting yet again. Right now, Barry Odom's just a couple steps ahead of Steve Sarkeesian. That time, just a three-man rush along the defensive line, dropping eight in the coverage. And you see the frustration with Sark. They got to be more efficient on first and second down because third and behind the sticks, way too many defenders in coverage for the Razorbacks to get good yardage. Their fifth three and out. He takes a bounce, and it'll be down. Katie? Well, Tess, I asked Sam Pittman why he didn't feel the need to dip into the transfer portal to bring in another quarterback at the end of the season. His answer, I'm a loyal person. It's hard to tell KJ you believe in him, you trust him, he's your guy, and then you bring someone else in. Pittman said, I know I'm paid to win football games, but this is my last job. I'm doing it the way I want to do it, and if it costs me my job, then it costs me my job. I'd rather do that than lose my integrity. Pittman kept his word, and KJ Jefferson said that it meant the whole world to him. And Katie, I love the story he told us about, hey, they were busting up to Missouri last year, and on that ride, they were actually talking to a quarterback in the transfer portal. And then KJ went out and played a great game. Felipe Franks was hurt. So then on the ride home, they, they called that transfer quarterback and said, don't, don't you worry. We got our guy. We feel good about our guy. KJ Jefferson has now guided his team to his lead against Texas. Texas defense with Brockermeyer getting the job done against Traylon Smith. KJ's done a great job tonight. Last week, not a great performance. Didn't throw it very accurately. Looked nervous. Looked uncomfortable. Feet didn't have the sense of urgency necessary to play at a really high level. But if there's one thing he has, man, he's got wheels. And in the open field, if you can get him in space, he's a real problem for opposing defenses. So I think the plan's been good tonight, and he's responded to the challenge and has performed really well against a solid Texas defense. Texas starting cornerback Josh Thompson is down, so we will take a short break. Glad you're with us watching the SEC on ESPN. Remember we said this is about the past, the rivalry, the present, the now, and the future of when they will be SEC rivals again. You know, this is 17 years to the day of Texas's last visit here to Fayetteville. Of course, they had Vince Young and Cedric Benson back then. Oh, what a play! Intercepted! Longhorns! Foster with the pick! B.J. Foster! The senior comes up with the big play that the Horns need. First turnover of the game. What a great play from Foster, just reading the quarterback's eyes. And you're going to see him just come right underneath this slant route. 
KJ Jefferson never sees him, but how about the concentration, reaching out, getting a hand on the football, and tipping it to himself. He has made not one, not two, but three massive plays for the Longhorn defense in the last few drives. Remember we said moments ago, they've only been in Arkansas territory once before this. Have to take advantage. B. John Robinson. As he gets it to the 22-yard line, tackled by Bumper Poole, who comes into the game after he had to sit out the first half because of a targeting call last week. Everybody's over there saying, hey, hey, BJ, what a play. One-hander, tap to himself, interception. Robinson now, first down, Horns. This is a little more like it. A little bit of misdirection, a little bit of counter action. Right there, they go with a weak side counter. Nice, strong run from B. John Robinson. He's able to split it just a little bit. Not big play there, but man, those are the body blows that start to take their toll. Johnson gets the call. And Johnson muscles ahead to the 12-yard line. Catalan came up with the tackle. Catalan, who was heavily recruited by Texas. He's one of the best defensive backs in all of college football. Second seven. Carr being chased. Carr spinning and then wrapped up at the 10 yard line. With the third down and five. Hard reeling a little bit mm. as he got to his feet. Texas offense. Just 100 total yards and not a third down tonight. Third and five, out of the backfield, and reaching for the pylon, Johnson, it's going to be first and goal, Longhorns. How about Hudson Card scanning the field, eyes working all the way from the left, working all the way back to the right. As you see, the pylon cam almost stretching out over the top. Excellent job by the quarterback getting through his progression. Big bodies coming in. Eye formation on first and goal. Robinson. Straight ahead. And finally, Texas is on the board. And that's the guy who put him in position. B.J. Foster made that great interception. Went up with one hand, tipped the ball, picked it off. And then that offense said, let's go get it. And they did. Just an excellent job of converting on sudden change by Texas's offense. And man, that third down conversion, the throw to Johnson was just a thing of beauty by the quarterback. They cut into that lead. KJ Jefferson's first mistake of the night sensational effort from Foster and then what do you do when you get to the other side you give it to your big dog Bijan Robinson with the touchdown ESPN college football primetime presented by Subway is brought to you by Allstate Save money like a champion with Allstate and Chick-fil-A. Try the grilled chicken club sandwich today. This place is rocking and it's packed. Arkansas playing a top 15 team at home in a non-conference game. Haven't done that since they lost to USC back in 2006. They've got a nine-point advantage on number 15, Texas. But Texas just found something with the kickoff and then the Robinson touchdown 
Sanders on the return, stretching to the 19. Let's go to studio with Matt. All right, guys, time now for our celebration moment brought to you by Allstate. Once down, 14 nothing. Parker White, South Carolina, game-winning field goal as time expires. How about Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks? They get the win on the road, 20-17. to Shane Beamer, who's already off to a good start recruiting for South Carolina, feels like he's got some of the big pieces in place to try to rebuild things there in Columbia. See how Jefferson responds. He's going to call a timeout. This is an important play for Arkansas, too. I mean, this is one that we used to have on our card called a G-Bot. Get back on track. Quarterback just made a bad decision. So what does Kendall Browse go back to to get K.J. Jefferson feeling good again? A G-Bot play. Get back on track. Find something in there he's comfortable with, whether it's an easy completion or a run that he feels good about. But you got to get your quarterback back into the game after the mistake he just made that led to the Longhorn points. A hey, week one NFL Sunday. Get it started at 10 a.m. Eastern with the countdown crew on ESPN, of course, available on the app. We've got Patrick Mahomes sitting down with his former teammate, Alex Smith. And a look at what could be Aaron Rodgers' last dance in Green Bay. All the breaking news, all the injuries, the previews, everything you need on countdown starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. Johnson, nothing there. Great pursuit down the line. Ojimo and Overshone coming in on the tackle. I really like the intensity that the Texas defense is playing with already. Not a ton of snaps on defense so far this half because they've made the most of them, but man, they are flying around. Most notably, number zero, Overshone. Second and 11. Jefferson, tons of time downfield, wide open and into the hands of Tyson Morris. Good pass pro by Johnson to get Jefferson that time. Big strike for 44 yards. Right to the line. Tempo. Johnson, look at this hole. Dominic Johnson had a five-yard touchdown in the first half and now running downhill here in the third quarter. Well, give him a bone because he just saved a life, man. How about the throw? We'll go back a second. He cleans up that pressure off the left-hand side, keeps his quarterback's jersey clean. Now they give it back to him. Well, now they're giving him work. And his quarterback just gave him a block. And he's inside the 10, and it's first and goal Hawks. What a sequence there from Dominique Johnson. The outstanding block, the great run on consecutive runs. Man, that was a thing of beauty there from the sophomore tailback. Unbelievable pickup in protection and two beautiful carries to secure momentum and to get close to the end zone. Cascade of boos from the crowd. Their team had a lot of momentum, but right now the concern is Luke Brockermeyer. The middle linebacker, starter for Texas, who's grabbing his right knee. And how about that sequence? You were talking about a get back on track. My man went dagger. <laughs> he didn't go G-bot. He went dagger. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, that was a thing of beauty. And separation by his wide receiver was excellent. But it was all made possible because of the protection by his running back man you've got that blindside pressure and you just had your life saved by your outstanding back and then you reward him with a couple nice carries there as he got close to the end zone and Johnson just went for 12 yards and his first and goal that ball is cresting the six yard line so as soon as Texas gets right back into the game they get the interception they get the touchdown don't blink because the hogs went right down the field Traylon Smith comes in at running back. I'm running the ball here if I'm Arkansas, man. I want to pound it as best I can. And that's what they'll do. Reaching out for that goal line coming up just short. 
The second and goal from the one. Run the same exact play, and I do it quickly. Trying to go up and over and in. Good surge initially from the Texas Longhorns. Well, Tavondre Sweat actually won, beat up Ricky Stromberg, the center, but Smith would not be denied going vertical. They've been in the red zone four times. They've scored four times. 23 to 7. Traylon Smith. Great way to answer by Arkansas. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Moss Student Section of the Year contest. Use the hashtag Student Section Sauce to get a committee's attention. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Let me tell you, we've been here through the years. When they feel like they got something good, and there's an opponent brand name like this on the other side, there are a few places like it. We've got 76,000 plus standing room only here tonight. Jameson on the return. All right, so Barry Odom, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, has been lauded tonight by his head coach and by us for what he's done to this Texas offense. He's held them to 110 total yards, 50 passing. Well, he went up against Sark in that great Alabama offense last year. Yeah, Alabama dominated, I get it. But look at the numbers he did against that team. What does that tell you? I mean, that group offensively was an absolute juggernaut until they came here. And yes, they gave up some plays in special teams, and Devontae Smith went off in special teams and turned the punt to the house. But Barry Odom did his job. He was off the charts good and has been again tonight. Look at this. I mean, look at that. How good is the SEC at night? Card, play action, setting up. Downfield, open is worthy, and it was to the right of him. Worthy can fly. And Card had a chance, but they couldn't connect. That's the second time now that Hudson Card on a real deep throw downfield. The ball's drifted just a little to his right. He's got to make that adjustment. The further you throw, the more it's going to drift. As it comes off your hand as a right-handed passer, think about the revolutions. It's rotating clockwise. Well, the momentum of those rotations will take the ball and tail it just a little bit. He's got to throw and aim left to allow that ball to adjust. Second and ten. Time again, deep again, and incomplete again. Joshua Moore was the intended target. Same exact thing. The throw just drifting a little to the right on the deep ball. As you can see it, the receiver's got a step. It's a perfectly blocked play. And he throws it, but look at where it ends up. It's way right of the wide receiver. He's got to make that adjustment. That's three now that he's left on the field because the ball's tailing to his right. We're one of eight on third down from One of eight. Third and ten. Hard. On the run, and that's a nice, accurate throw to Moochie Dixon for a first down. This kid can throw on the run. Yeah, man, he's a great athlete. That was really nicely done. Threw it low to his wide receiver. Good job stepping up in the pocket. Had plenty of time, only a three-man rush. Finding the wide out for the conversion. First down, Texas. John Robinson patient and then finds just enough of a crease to make his way to the 40-yard line. You're Hudson Card and you're Steve Sarkeesian, man. Shoot or shoot. Keep getting those guys open downfield. He's going to hit one. He's going to make that adjustment. But also remember who's the bell cow in this operation. It's number five. 
Anytime he touches the football, that's a good thing for you offensively. So continue to lean on the run game and then take a chance on play action when that safety creeps up. And here is the play action, but Parr's got to extend the play. That was right on the hands of Whittington. He third down and four. Isaiah Nichols was bringing the pressure on Hudson Card. Card leaked out to the right, and now he's got to deal with this crowd again as Steve Sarkeesian calls his third and four. that noise and with the pressure of a third down they're going to use a timeout Monday Night Football comes your way from Vegas the Ravens are there 8 Eastern on ESPN ABC and the ESPN app Ravens and Raiders on Monday Night Football this setting, this place, and they got momentum right away with the early lead. And these fans have been soaking it in. Boy, they went through some rough patches in recent years. But then that guy, the big man, Sam Pittman, came in, settled things down. By the way, not as big as he once was. Coach <laughs> is looking good. He's down 50 pounds. He Coach is awesome. all about the keto, isn't he? He is. He's also about his defense with Barry Odom. They have been top notch tonight. And can they get a stop here or does Hudson Card have the answer on third and four? He's got time. He's going to tuck, run, and come up a yard short as 320-pound John Ridgway wrestled him down. There is very Wow, he loves working for Coach Pittman. Sark leaving the offense on the field here. And it seems a little early, I think, to potentially go for it. Maybe go with a hard count, see if he can draw Arkansas offsides. From his own 43, fourth and one, Texas is going for it. Robinson, not even close. He was met in the backfield and just wrapped up. Hayden Henry surged in. Grant Morgan was right there, too. These two guys unblocked, eyes in the backfield, and they make the play right here. Nothing they can do. Man, you look at Henry comes in, that crown of the helmet. The crown of the helmet is what initiates the contact. Got to be careful. Oh, my goodness. Is that targeting? Of course, it can be initiated from up top. Let's bring in our rules expert, John Perry. You know, I'm right there with you. I do think it's targeting. I do think they needed to shut that play down and take a look at it. We're inconsistent with this rule. And instead, we play on. And K.J. Jefferson with a quarterback run to the 36-yard line. John Perry says, Greg McElroy says, targeting here. Yeah, I mean, the crown of the helmet is what initiates the contact there from Henry. It's unbelievable play in the backfield. Very fortunate, though that they didn't stop it and take a peek. Sanders. And Sanders goes to the left side for a couple of yards. Right about at that line to gain. Jacoby Jones with the tackle. So Texas goes for it on fourth down. Comes up short. And here's Arkansas. Third and very short at the 32-yard line. Sanders again. It will be a first down Arkansas. Yeah, and if I'm Kendall Bryles the rest of this game, man, I honestly don't know if I put it in the air. I mean, I, I might run it every single down until Texas can prove to me that they can stop it. its quarterback run, its run to the outside with Traylon Smith, its runs up inside with Rocket Sanders, and then you get the 240-pound bell cow Johnson, number 20. He'll clean it up as you get close to the goal line, man. I would not take any unnecessary risk. I would just try to pound it and see if this Texas defense can hold in the front seven. We're going for 6.4 per rush. KJ 
Jefferson. Tons of time goes to the far side and he'll have a first down to six foot three Warren Thompson. Transfer from Florida State, an 11 yard reception. Smith cuts back wide open at nine yards. Time and again, this run game of the Razorbacks. For over 200 yards rushing. See if they move Overshone out, because if they do, then it's quarterback run all day long. And there it is. And the big man, KJ Jefferson, will move those chains to a first and goal. Steve Sarkeesian peeks up at the clock. He said, hey, we're under four minutes to go here in the third. And these guys are running down our throats, staring at that scoreboard, hoping this deficit doesn't grow bigger. And stay with it. This is critical for the Texas defense. Absolutely have to get off the field, forcing only three points. Massive sequence here. All out pressure. Look from Texas here. Let's see if they adjust. Looks like they're going to. Here it comes. First and goal. Jefferson gets three, and Jefferson is inside the five. Ajabo had to wrap him up. At some point, Pete Kwiatkowski knows, man, they're just going to give me a full dose of trying to run the ball, man. I got to dictate something. So I'm going to bring every single guy I have wearing a white jersey on a blitz or a pressure. Expect another look right here. They try to heat up K.J. Jefferson. Eighth play of the drive after the turnover and downs that... You question as a targeting call that should have been called. Corner of the end zone. There's a lot of contact, but it's incomplete. As Traylon Burks was covered by Anthony Cook. Crowd did not like that. It was close. Some contact, but I like it. I think it's been physical all day. Pretty well thrown football. I'm okay with the no call there. Good coverage by Anthony Cook. Haven't had to ask much of Traylon Burks, the preseason first team all SEC wide receiver. Johnson is that meaty muscle back on third and goal. And he gets the work here, but he is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage as Ford makes the tackle. Jalen Ford from Frisco, Texas comes up with the tackle on third down. Massive for Texas there. Sure was. Absolutely massive. Seven might have put this thing out of reach. At least mentally, if nothing else. I know you had an answer when all the momentum was on the Arkansas side. Been a perfect night for Cam Little. This another short field goal from 22. He's made from 24, 24, 44, and now 22. He's got four field goals. Greg, this week college football is coming together to recognize the important role of a teacher and their impressive effort to continue to perform their essential duties against the extraordinary backdrop of the ongoing pandemic. On behalf of the College Football Playoff Foundation and ESPN, we would like to donate a $1,000 Donors Choose gift card to Quinesha Smith, a special education teacher from Fayetteville High School and wife of Arkansas running back coach Jimmy Smith for her hard work and commitment to the kids in their classroom. She will be able to use the money for any school resources the student needs. And you got to believe Miss Smith is happy with her husband's work tonight. Oh. Over 200 yards That's rushing right. on the ground. They're working tonight, boys. That's a good night for that family, isn't it? That's awesome, man. We ran right by Fayetteville High School. That thing is beautiful. I mean, it's a big high school. I looked left. I was like, my goodness, I didn't know there was another college on campus. And I sure also enough, didn't know there was such an incline to about every street in Fayetteville <laughs> on our five-mile jog yeah, this morning. Tonight man, was man. literally uphill in every direction. That's, I, I realized that quickly. I feel bad for the students having to walk uphill to class. It was great. Rivalry renewed. 
Let's check in with Matt Berry in the studio. Guys, the big one of the big house, Michigan taking on Washington. Wolverines up 3-0. Blake Corum, one cut, gone. 68 yards for the touchdown. Michigan takes a 10-0 lead, 7.5 left in the second. And what about what Mississippi State is doing to NC State? Will Roger to Jaden Wally for the touchdown. It is all pirate, 21-3 in the third. That's a big night for Mississippi State. That NC State team, that was a team that many people were making a trendy pick. Like, who do you like just behind Clemson? A lot of people said NC State. But here's Mississippi State up big in the second half. That ball is knocked out of the hand of Card. And that is being played as a fumble. And Greg Brooks recovers it for Arkansas. They're going to look at this one. But Greg Brooks... Did the right thing, said, I'm playing that as a live ball. Is this knocked out of the hand of Hudson Carr? Wow. It's Zach Williams got in there as Hudson Card was bringing up his motion. It looks like as Hudson Card's bringing his arm back, that's when the ball's dislodged. Here it is. It's a great look at it right here. Arm coming back. The there goes the ball. Long before it starts the motion forward, that call is going to stand and be confirmed. What a huge play right there by Williams. John Perry, pretty clean cut, isn't it? It is clean cut, but you know what? We dissect this work week in and week out, slow motion, different angles. Let me tell you, at real speed, that is a difficult call. Well done, slow whistle, let the play go through, great judgment with the fumble. John, why is that difficult as an official in real time? Explain that to us. Well, none of these officials start and end with the same player. You're walking through a progression that referee went from guard to tackle blocks, then went back to the quarterback and had maybe a half a second to take a look at a hand pass fumble. So the turnover and Rocket Sanders and the Razorbacks, they are just running wild inside the 10. Texas looked so good last week. Looked so good against a South Louisiana team in a top 25 class. But this Arkansas team is different, isn't it, Greg? It is, but there was this is a good run. I mean, they just bend it all the way back. I mean, good flow by Texas. I mean, they're playing hard, trying to pursue. But how about Rocket finding that backdoor cut as Texas over pursues and there's nobody home? And how about the finish there in the corner of the end zone? Just a beautiful job of him turning, finding green grass, and then this, boom, not being denied until he finds pay dirt. Just a beautiful run for the young man that was playing wide receiver in the spring. Said, man, you're too good with the ball in your hands. We've got to put you in the backfield. Here's what's interesting about Rocket Sanders, because you say, hey, he was playing wide receiver. The guy's 6'2", 225, he was playing wide receiver. So actually, size-wise, He's more the prototype that Sam Pittman and Kendall Browns are looking for. Big, strong, fast. Traylon Smith's great. He's been, he's been wonderful. He's 5'9", 190. Rocket Sanders, this freshman, he fits what they want to be. We'll see who comes out at quarterback for Texas as they trail 33 to seven. You know it was a heck of a competition in camp between Hudson Card and Casey Thompson. Casey Thompson who last year was excellent in the bowl game against Colorado and he will come out to play quarterback. 
He was 8 of 10 with four touchdown passes in the Alamo Bowl. He's from Oklahoma City. And he is a guy that this team really believes in. He's the rah-rah guy. He's loved by his teammates. Sark gave him a fair chance. Said it would come down to who takes care of the ball better. That was Hudson Card. And he gives him a little more upside. But right now, Thompson comes in the game with this big deficit. And he goes to Whittington. Thompson's an excellent thrower in that game against Colorado. Eight of ten, four touchdowns. How's that for a tradition? I mean, he hit really, really throw the football. Very accurate, perfect for this situation. Thompson now. This is what he can do on the ground. Now, he did this last week as well. Came in late in the third quarter against Louisiana. They were up by 16 then, not in a big hole. Hit 41 yards and a touchdown. Scored on a couple drives that he was in on. Checks down to Robinson. Robinson makes the most of it and then is ridden out of bounds by Fouché and a flag comes out with that. Did seem late as you see Robinson's out of bounds right here, but that's where it happens and it's tough to tell from there to see exactly where he was relative to the sideline, but I did feel like it was a touch late as Robinson got close. Thompson. He will tuck wiggle and then be taken down by bumper pool. Bumper Pool, whose family is all Razorback fans. His little kids used to come to the game dressed in Hogs gear with his sister Maddie. Maddie now works in the recruiting office. So they're all the way in when it comes to helping out this team. Dijon Robinson, that'll be a first down for Texas. Thompson, plenty of time to take a shot. And way beyond Joshua Moore. Last play of the third quarter. A third quarter that at Arkansas take complete control. Smith had the touchdown run. Sanders had the touchdown run. And the Hogs are sitting here unranked against number 15 with a 33 to 7 lead as we head to the fourth. College football prime time presented by Subway. You're reading that scoreboard correct. 33 to 7. Number 15 has been punched right in the face tonight. And it's this defense that has been doing their job. In fact, you think about Steve Sarkeesian. He's been, listen, he's been a great offensive coach. He led one of the great offenses of all time a year ago to a national championship. Grant Morgan is down, linebacker for Arkansas. We'll check on him. But in his previous 82 games as a head coach, he's putting up over 30 points per game when he was at USC and Washington, over 400 yards per game. Tonight, seven points, 164 yards for Sark's team. Grant Morgan's a big part of the success of this Arkansas defense. So they hope the best for him. Captain Morgan, team captain, has worked very, very hard. Um, things are much different in Arkansas, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, big time. And they got, a, they got a great staff that they've put together. And kids that are now buying in and fitting with the culture of how they go about winning at Arkansas. I think what's most impressive, though, is just how physical they've been, man. I mean, sure. this has been a game that has been decided in the trenches. You talk to anybody that watches SEC football, yeah. it's a line of scrimmage league. 
And so far tonight, their defensive line has manhandled the Texas offensive line. They've got absolutely nothing going offensively as a result of the dominance from that front seven defensively from the Hogs. Let's watch what happened to Morgan. Yeah, he just got rolled up, man. I hope he's okay. Such a big part of this defense. Number Casey Thompson, the quarterback for Texas now. Third down and nine. Incomplete. He was looking for Cade Brewer. Flag is down. Looks like it's going to be a late hit on Thompson. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 55. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Just way too late there. Obviously by Trey Williams, who's been getting after it all day long, working against Christian Jones, the left tackle. At that time, man, way too late. Got to keep your wits about you. Can't give free first downs when you're about to almost get off the field. Lacey Thompson, who patiently waited his turn behind Sam Ellinger and now playing behind Hudson Card. He's in the game trying to rally the horns as he runs ahead inside the 10 yard line. Second and short Robinson. It'll be first and goal Texas. Casey Thompson. His father is the former Oklahoma star Charles Thompson. Charles Thompson who led the Sooners to Great wins back in the late 80s. That number one versus number two game against Nebraska, most memorably. Tenth play of this drive. Texas trying to spark any sense of hope here. And Thompson helps do that. Casey Thompson comes into the game and scores on the ground. Take a look for tonight's AT&T 5G Skycam. You're going to see Casey Thompson just have an opportunity to catch that seam. Pretty good job also setting up the defender Fouché to the outside, slipping him inside. Excellent work there by the quarterback. Ten play drive. Capped by Thompson's five yard touchdown run. More to come from Fayetteville after this short break. All day started. On the road, funny things happen. Texas is finding that out here tonight. They just scored to make it 33 14. Yeah, the Aggies went on the road up in Denver today. They were struggling with Colorado. They had to pull that out late. Tonight, the story has been the balanced rushing attack of Arkansas. They just have so many weapons. I mean, you got your quarterback who's built like Cam Newton, runs like him too, in KJ Jefferson. And then you have the smaller Traylon Smith, who's very fast, very speedy. And then how about this? Well, you know, can't handle those two. Take care of this one. 240. And Dominique Johnson. Then you got Rocket Sanders, who did a great job of putting the ball on that last drive offensively for the Hogs. This rushing attack gives you so much variation, and they all complement each other beautifully. It's been a really nice blend of speed and size and power throughout the course of this game. Excellent work from Kendall Bryles and this entire Arkansas offense. And saw the big three there, and then Sanders has 36 and a touchdown. Now A.J. Green is in the game, and A.J. Green, he can be productive too. He's another good-looking freshman. You know the ones that, listen, you look at guys like A.J. Green and Rocket Sanders and some of the freshmen they have on the field. We were talking to Arkansas's coaching staff about recruiting. They said, you want to know the quickest way to try to get better? <laughs> Just get guys that can fly. Right. Just put speed on the field. Absolutely. Because you can recruit speed in one recruiting class. Yes. Go get a couple guys from the track. Next thing you know, you got guys that can flat out change the game when they get in the open field. And they have plenty of that. What I've been impressed with, though, here in year number two under Sam Pittman is the development of the offensive line. Some guys have gained 50 pounds in some cases. They've gotten bigger, they've gotten more physical, and it's showing the night. Green again. That is that speed, that burst, 
that quickness as A.J. Green is out to midfield. There's just no answer up front for the Texas defense. They're going to have to find one, too, because there are plenty of teams in the Big 12 that can pound the football as well. Iowa State, of course, didn't look good today, but they can pound you with Brees Hall. We know Oklahoma has been a team that in the past has been very good with the run game. There's plenty of teams that they're going to see throughout their league that can run the ball with similar effectiveness to what Arkansas is doing tonight. Maybe not quite this much power along the front, but they're going to have to find some answers in this first and second level defensively. 19 yards there from Green. He looks to add to it here, but only gets a yard as he crosses midfield. Harden in that Texas front when all I think, night long. When I think Arkansas, though, Tess, don't mm -hmm. you just visualize a team that looks like this? Yes. Physical, tough, blue collar, does the little things. Sam Pittman is unfurling his plan in year number two, and it's been a thing of beauty so far here in the last six quarters of football. Second and nine. Sanders, little wiggle, little burst, and it'll be third and two. Well, guys, I've been really impressed with K.J. Jefferson's demeanor over here on the sidelines. Yes, he's been talking a great deal to his offensive players, but after every series, whether it's good or bad, he walks through the defensive players and the special teams, and his message has been the same. He keeps saying, stay strong and let's keep rolling. And this is a guy who said he learned how to lead by watching his friend Felipe Franks a year ago. Well, he's all on his own tonight, and his presence has definitely been felt on the sidelines and on the field. It's amazing to hear the relationship that he has with Felipe Franks. Says the guy changed my career. He taught me how to be a quarterback at this level. And good for Felipe Franks, by the way, now making the 53 man roster as Matt Ryan's backup in Atlanta as Rocket Sanders continues this running assault by Arkansas. Five more yards and a first down. And I think that's something really neat about KJ Jefferson, too. They go to the transfer portal. He starts a couple games two years ago in 19. They go to the transfer portal, add Felipe Franks. You know what some guys would have done if they're KJ Jefferson? You yep. just went and got somebody else. You're now dating somebody else. They would have fled. But what he did, no. He said, I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to learn from this guy. I'm going to be a better player as a result of it. And it's really coming to, into its own tonight. He was not great last week. Full disclosure, not great. Inaccurate, not great decisions. Made a couple plays with his legs. But man, he's grown by leaps and bounds tonight and has really looked comfortable. Not much on that right side. Sanders falls ahead to the 35 yard line. Seen that look before. Imagine with how they're running the football, they do anything but continue to do that for the next nine minutes and 30 seconds. Just run after run after run. And they do more of it with Green. Give credit to that offensive line. You got big Ricky Stromberg in the center of that offensive line. Look at number 51. SEC coaches voted him number one first team preseason. Sam Pittman, you know, he's coached some of the best offensive linemen to come through the SEC, and he says he considers Ricky in that group. Here's what blows my mind. That right there, 310. Because that young man, when we called his game a couple years ago, yeah. he was 250 pounds playing against war daddies at 330 and was holding his own. Now that he's grown up and grown into his body and gained some needed weight, he's a completely different player, man. He's the anchor there in the middle of the offensive line. He's done a great job tonight. 32. A.J. Green. They are crawling. Adelon. Kid ran a 10-3 in high school. Just showed that track speed for 30 yards of dynamite here in Fayetteville.
want to know what kind of a night it is for the Arkansas run game. They just went over 300 yards rushing tonight. Three hundred and nine yards rushing tonight by Arkansas. A.J. Green with a first and seven more on the board. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. Some of the action today, very impressive win by Iowa. There's the most impressive of the day, though. Oregon over Ohio State in Columbus. College football rankings are brought to you by Allstate. Yeah, how about the win by the Iowa Hawkeyes going on the road to their bitter arch rival and having a dominant victory. Notre Dame slept walk to the finish line against Toledo. Clemson bounced back nicely. AM survived. And then Georgia against what was a pretty good UAB team that people don't recognize. A dominant victory, but we all know the big one, Ohio State and Oregon. Let's talk a little bit about that, because obviously that is a game that screams of college football playoff implications. What do you think now long term based on that big W by Oregon? Well, Ohio State's still in a good spot because they're still in a position to win a Power 5 league. They still control their own destiny yeah. in a lot of ways. Now, What's interesting is how does this impact Clemson and how does this impact the Pac-12? The Pac-12 hasn't had a playoff representative since 2016. Could this be the year? With what we've seen from UCLA, their dominance against what uh, should be a decent LSU team, and then now what Oregon did, and even Colorado in a losing effort. Man, the Pac-12's had a really good start to the year so far. This is Robinson, Keelan Robinson with the run for Texas. Here's what I'll say about Ohio State. Iowa with a big win today. They need Iowa to keep doing that yes. and get to the Big Ten championship game undefeated to have a signature big championship game win. They need Penn State to be good. Correct. Right? They need Michigan to be good. Yes. They also need all the teams in the ACC to stay where they're at because if Clemson's schedule strengthens, then Clemson could be in a position to jump them as well. Thompson wobbly ball as he threw it on the run to Whittington. And then when you look at the top of the SEC, I mean, you got Alabama, Georgia. You got, if you get a clash of the Titans in the SEC championship game, and they've got goose eggs in the loss column, that both those teams are already in. More than likely. I'd be, I'd be highly surprised if those two teams wouldn't both get them. Of course, they're one and two right now. And a lot of people think about maybe Texas A&M being a big speed bump. For Alabama, AM struggled on the road today playing Colorado in Denver. Here is Whittington on a crossing route. And he will have it for a first down. Did you get a look at AM today? What was going on with that game? Well, you lose your quarterback early. It's a tough road trip. Going to altitude is always tricky. But you lose your quarterback after only two attempts in Haynes King. In goes Zach Calzada, and he looks shaky. The offense just didn't operate with any levels of efficiency. Now, if Haynes King is, for whatever reason, sidelined for an extended period of time, Calzada's a good thrower, but he's got a long way to go after what he showed us today. Casey Thompson can run the ball. He goes for nine yards there. I love the way he prepares as a backup quarterback. He said even when Sam was, you know, the man, he would prepare like he's the starter every single week with Casey. Robinson on second and one, and he can't make it back to the line of scrimmage. Keelan Robinson, the transfer from Alabama, tackled by Zach Williams. Zach Williams, who forced the fumble earlier tonight. And Hudson Card was winding up to pass. Third and two. Down 26 points. Tenth time that Arkansas has had a tackle for loss with that last tackle. Thompson, look at the time he's got on third and two, and he gets it complete as he connects to the 30, trying to just chip into this deficit. They're down by 26. Sark's second game as the head coach. 
The Horns never trailed by 26 in any game in Tom Herman's four seasons when he was the head coach in Austin. Casey Thompson going to glide towards the sticks, run down by Bumper Pool. Bumper Pool, not a nickname. It was a nickname. His father named him James. They said, I always wanted to have a child named Bumper with the last name Pool. Everybody called him Bumper. So when they were 16, they said, you know what? We're just going to legally change it. <laughs> so that's on the driver's license, folks. Bumper Pool. I love it, man. I mean, his nickname should be Thumper because that mm -hmm. dude brings the heat on some of these hits, man. He has been flying around tonight here in the second half now that he's off of his targeting suspension. Robinson. Good commitment to go ahead. We mentioned the family, the Pool family, how they're all the way in as Razorback fans generationally. There's Bumper and Maddie, and you know they grew up going to games, right? They grew up calling the Hogs and Woo Pig and everything about it. And now he's the star linebacker, and Maddie works in the recruiting office. That's a big part of Sam Pittman's appeal, too. Got to keep the guys that grow up Razorbacks, keep them in state, keep them as Razorbacks. Can't leave the state. Thompson scanning, extending to the end zone. He goes too far out of bounds. I think that's one thing about Arkansas. Obviously, you're going to have eight to ten guys a year that can play at a really high level of football. Not a tremendously densely populated state, but the guys that are here, you have to have them. You have to get them. They can't go elsewhere. Even though there will be some people that try to get in here and get some guys, they can. You got to put a fence up around your own state. Then you got to get to Dallas and get out throughout the rest of the Southeast. I think Pittman's the man to do it with some of his relationships that he's cultivated over the years. Thompson and to the goal line and in is Moochie Dixon. So Casey Thompson has come in. And he has been able to move the Texas offense. A couple of touchdown drives. And Moochie Dixon with a 16-yard touchdown catch. Ooh, boy, you see that helmet come up? is a touchdown. Play is under review. Yeah, they're going to. Man, oh, man. They're going to look at that. And that looked like if there's ever been a textbook targeting right there, that looked like it was it. I mean, I mean, that is pure crown of the helmet, isn't it? Crown of the helmet. What do you see, John Perry? I'm looking at the same thing you are. Again, lower lead. It's the posture we want out of the game. Now, they'll look at the score to make sure he's in, and they can also take a look at this targeting. So there's two items here. Jackson Woodard was... Line in late. It's really close. That left knee is it down prior to him crossing the plane. There's, there's the D down. Where's the ball at that point? Might be just a touch short. So they got a lot to look at on this replay. There's the knee. There's Where's the, the knee. ball at that point? Here's as though it's just a little bit short. And on top of it, you can obviously create that targeting call as the crown of the helmet is what initiated the contact. We've seen a lot of those the last couple weeks where guys are leading with the crown of the helmet, man. You have to get that out of football. It's dangerous not just for the ball carrier, but also for the defender to fly in and not see what he's hitting. This crowd is partying deep into the night here. After reviewing the play, when the runner's knee was down, the ball was short of the goal line. By the place at the half yard line, to be first down, please put the clock at four minutes, 59 seconds, four, five, nine. And they're roaring over everything, even when they got the game well in control. Replays that take it to the one inch line. Really surprised no reference of the target. Really am. I thought that was 
seemed very obvious. Pretty obvious example of plays in which guys were thrown out a week ago. 5-9-183, Robinson's the running back here on first and goal. And he'll get the work. And he won't even be able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Seventy four thousand five hundred and thirty one is the attendance that is a new record they were so psyched for this game feeling their team is coming back that this program is on the rise taking on a long time rival a renewed rivalry and a future conference rivalry Robinson again and Robinson again is driven back. Bumper pool and the rest of them wrestling him down the line. It'll be third and goal. They get a stop on the next two downs. The roof might come off this place. Oh, they are ready to burst. That has been for days in town. Since we arrived in town, everywhere you go, you see Dean, Texas. There are generations upon generations who understand what the rivalry was. So much of this is rooted in the past. The present is very exciting because of where Arkansas feels like they're headed. And the future is going to be amazing as conference foes. Third and goal. No! Again! They can't get enough of it. You're playing the horns in this town. They want to do it time and again. Somebody said to me, listen, I've been here a long time. I've been in Texas a long time as well. Been around both programs. These fans, they hate Texas more than they like themselves. And they're still roaring up by 26 with under three minutes to play for a fourth and goal stop. Casey Thompson, sprint right, looking for anything, trying to turn the corner. And he reaches across and gets in on fourth and goal. Thompson's playing with some fire since he's come in. That was a great effort there. I mean, there was a couple of Razorback defenders that were all over him. And that was an example of a young man getting his opportunity after losing a hard-fought quarterback battle, saying, I will not be denied looks like he does in fact cross the plane what an effort there from the quarterback so Hudson card was named the starting quarterback the Monday of week one after a very tough competition with Casey Thompson cars the one who has the arm talent who won over the team with the way he played in August that perhaps has more upside, isn't the biggest vocal leader, more in the phase of establishing himself as a young quarterback. Thompson's the rah-rah guy. Thompson's the guy who wants to give it his all and can run the ball and has been around. But he came up just short. But Sark said right from the start, I'm going to play both guys. Thompson's going to get his playing time. He did so week one. He's done so week two. So how do you move forward here with Card and Thompson? We'll talk about that when we come back after this break. Glad you're with us watching the SEC on ESPN. Future SEC team's been in a big hole all night. Texas trailing Arkansas. Tomorrow, it's Djokovic and Medvedev. Four o'clock on ESPN, the U.S. Open men's finals. Djokovic trying to have the calendar year Grand Slam. It'll be his 21st Slam title. That would break the men's career mark that he shares with Federer and Nadal. Man, if you ever told me when Federer was in his prime that we'd be sitting back with Djokovic, here's the onside kick. And that is fought for. We'll see who comes up with it. But just the perspective on what we're going to see tomorrow, where Djokovic is in his career, history could be made tomorrow at 4 in the afternoon on ESPN. Flag is down on this onside kick. It is Arkansas ball. 
Well, well what I was going to say, when Federer was in his absolute prime, yes. to think that there would be somebody to come along, not Nadal came along, they were battling, right? Right. That was. Ball, offside, kicking team number six, five yard penalty from the end of the play. It's first down, Arkansas. Time out on the field. First down, Arkansas. That was Frazier Ali. Now you got a guy that may be past them by miles. It's amazing. In the same generation. In the same generation. We will see if the Joker can do it tomorrow. We'll take a quick break. And then we'll talk about this Texas quarterback situation. Hear what Greg has to say. Dixon Street is going to be rocking tonight. They've been looking forward to celebrate some football here in town after some choppy seasons. And they've got a team now that's about to be 2-0. That just took down one of the all time rivals for this school and a rivalry renewed as Oglesby takes the hand up. All right, so I asked you a couple minutes ago, what do you do now if you're Sark? Because Hudson Card won the starting job as your quarterback, struggled tonight. Casey Thompson comes in. Leads him down and has a couple rushing touchdowns. How do you approach this moving forward if you're Texas? You open it up, and that's really what it comes down to. This is a evergreen situation where things can change rapidly. Hudson left some plays on the field today. He wasn't perfect. He didn't have a ton of help. Had some drops. Protection was not good. Running game was really not good for the most part there in the first three quarters. But you can't ignore the life that Casey Thompson breathed into this offense. I'm not saying you have to make a change. I'm just saying open it up. Let's see who performs better in practice and go with that guy here in week number three. Hornsby on the run and look at Hornsby. Malik Hornsby, the backup quarterback, takes it all the way down to the 10 yard line. Now this kid can fly. There are many who talk to in the program and describe him as the fastest player on the team. Not even close is what they tag it with. He's the fastest player on the team and it's not even close. He has that kind of juice. Unbelievable track speed. He anchored the fastest four by 100 in the country when he was in high school. That's moving. That is moving. It's a different <laughs> kind of speed. So it's not a shock that he's on the field. They want to try to get him some work. But he's a great example of what the staff said. Just give us guys that can fly. Man, they have run for 340 yards against Texas. 340 yards. And nobody had 100 yards. Not a single 100-yard rusher, and they run for 340. Last time the Razorbacks scored 40 or more points against a top 25 team in regulation. He did it with an overtime game. 2011, 10 years it's been since they scored 40 or more points against a top 15 team. A 2-0 start, Greg. First 2-0 start they've had in the last five years. It's a good, solid win for Arkansas. The beautiful win. A dominant performance from Arkansas. Both lines of scrimmage. One that Sam Pittman, the former offensive line coach, now head hog, is going to be awfully proud of. We got a field stormer. And folks, you're saying, now why would you field storm? It's a number 15 team in the country. You want to know why? Because rivalries matter in college football. And this one runs deep, real deep. Arkansas thinks this of Texas. The past, the present, the future, all converging to celebrate a win over the team that they don't like so much. The Hogs walloped them here. Katie. Thank you, Taz. Coach Pittman, you said you... What's a win like this feel like? Oh, uh, look, at, look, at, look at the fans. Isn't that something? Good for them. I've got such a good coaching staff. It's what a great group of kids. And they played their tail off, and they were well prepared. And I'm just so happy for the kids and the state of Arkansas. You said you have the best D.C. in the country. Well, you might have one of the best defenses in the country. What did you think start to finish of their performance? Man, weren't they something, you know, and then they got something going when we were trying to, you know, melt the clock down. Obviously, we wish we'd have stopped them at that point. Good team tonight and beat a good team. KJ took some flack last week. What did you think of his leadership yeah. and play tonight? Well, I think Kendall had a really good game plan with him, getting him the ball and, and, and allowing him to run. And I think it really, really uh, got him rolling, throwing the football. Is Dixon Street going to be rocking tonight? <laughs> 
I know I'm not going to be down there. I'm too old. Congratulations. Thanks. Go it's a good win for Sam Pittman. What's this team going to look like in the toughest division around? I tell you what, I don't want to play them. That team will punch you and fight you every single snap. The thing of beauty tonight, a dominant performance. Texas is going to be in this league in a few years. Arkansas says, welcome to the SEC early. We play line of scrimmage ball. We run the ball. And they did so for 333 yards. 40 to 21 over number 15. But don't go anywhere because we got another great rivalry coming up. College football continues. Utah, BYU. That does it for Fayetteville. We're there to be partying deep into the night. Enjoy Utah and BYU right now.